morning from San Pedro, California. Buenos dias. You could just do the Kelly Lane that one. But it's fine. Okay. Hey, Regina. Hey, Tanisha. What's everybody up to this morning? Oh, a lot. Tanisha got it ready for us. It's 34 degrees in Tennessee with a high 53 today in Nashville. Amen. Yes, we thank the Lord. We give him praise, honor, and glory this morning. It's good to see you all. I promise you, as soon as I closed my eyes last night, it was time to get back up this morning. So, nevertheless, the work continues. All right, Demira. <laughs> we used to do that every morning. Y'all good? So, Brittany, can you give me a way to... Let me see if my iPad is charged up. To be able to read the word yet? No. Because I'm on both phones. Okay, I get it. Y'all good this morning? Hey, Joel, how are you this morning? Good morning. Everybody good this morning? Okay, it is 6.03. Let's go into prayer and tell the Lord our good he is this morning. Good morning, Keely. God bless you. Good morning, Miss Crystal. God bless you. Amen. Y'all ready? Father, we thank you so much this morning for your grace, your mercy, and your love. We thank you so much for bringing the warrior nation back together again. Lord, just, just stand before your throne, shoulder to shoulder, and cry out, Abba, Father, you are the Lord, and you rule and reign in our lives. Father, we're just excited about life. We're excited about our destinies. We're excited about all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you are about to do. Lord, we just want to be led by your spirit, creating us clean hearts and renew the right spirits inside of us. Renew our minds. We ask for a favor this morning and wisdom this morning, divine protection, Lord. We ask for peace this morning. We ask for direction this morning, Lord. We just honor you. Father, we thank you for the very air in our lungs today. Just to have another opportunity in life, another chance to walk closer with you, Lord. We just, we're just excited today. Holy Spirit, you're our teacher, a dynamic teacher. And we just thank you for every single morning teaching us this word straight from heaven. So we honor you for what will come forth today. Jesus, we love you. You are our master. You are our savior. You are our true and risen king. And we thank you for the work of the cross. We thank you for the redemption that's given us access into eternity. We honor you today. Father, you're so good to us. Y'all just take a moment and say, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are so good to us. You're so much better than we deserve. We just honor you today. We honor you today. We reverence you. We worship you. We adore you. There is none like you. You have no rivals. You have no equals. You have no comparisons. You are the Lord and you rule and reign, Lord. And we just thank you today for your power, for the victory that we have in you, that we are victors and not victims, Lord. We just honor you today for who we are in you. Lord, if there's anybody out there today, and we'll pray about this again, but Lord, and they don't know what their purpose is. Then, Father, I ask you as they tune in today and they listen to this word, that you would just touch their hearts, you would speak to them, you would just show them how strong and mighty they are in you and what you've called them to do. Have your way today. Just tell the Lord to have his way, y'all. Have your way today. Have your way. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Yeah. All right, Warrior Nation. Good morning. Hello, December born. Everybody good today? Good morning, Mo. How you doing? So let's go ahead and do the weather forecast before we get into anything else today. Brittany, what do you have pinned, my best friend, in the whole wide world? Yes, sir. Oh, the shirt that I'm wearing? Yeah. Okay. Right now in Jasper, Mississippi, it's 43 degrees with a high of 58. The sun goes up at 7.14 a.m. and goes down at 7.06 p.m. The humidity is 72%, and the winds are coming out of the north at 14 miles per hour. It feels like 36. Brittany, for you to be so tiny, you make so much noise. Brittany has big feet, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes she has trouble navigating them. <laughs> like she just shook the table. I'm telling you. It's okay, Brittany. We love you. Y'all tell Brittany y'all love her this morning. But check this out. Are y'all enjoying the time change? <laughs> I hear some grunts, some gruntles this morning. Okay, y'all. We're going to be in Genesis today, 46, 28-34. They're laughing, Brittany. <laughs> Let me say this. Uh, the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me for the last two weeks about reopening Empire, and which was which is our business startup and entrepreneurship seminar for ladies. We may open up to guys next year, but for now, it's for ladies. I wanted to start it small. Evidently, I wanted to start it smaller than the Lord would have it to be. And so, after meeting everybody on Saturday, and a lot of y'all saying, please, if you would just open this back up, I'll sit on the floor if I have to. Like, the Lord just kept dealing with me about it, and finally, I said, you know what, God, have your way. I'm going to open it back up. So, we have reopened Empire, and as soon as I opened it, people honestly started registering. It was like, I want to say thank you this morning because y'all kept your word. You know, a lot of you was like, if you just give me a chance, I'm going to register. Can you please make one more slot? Can you please open it back up? So we have a, a limited number of slots open. They're telling you that they love you, Brittany. But like the moment I released it and opened it back up, 
y'all started registering. And so I just want to say this morning, uh, don't limit God in what he wants to do. Uh, it's been prophesied over me. I don't know how many times that space is going to be our problem. And we're already starting to run into that because we're trying to find things and venues and it's like space is already becoming a problem because it's like I'm I'm seeing it one way and God is saying, no, nope, it's bigger than that. And I'm saying it this way. He's like, no, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. And so it's just like, be obedient this morning to what God has called you to do. And we're going to be in Genesis again, 46, 20 to 34. Brittany has it pinned, I believe. She, oh, she has the shirt pinned. Uh, this is the shirt for the for the seminar on April 14th. And so make sure that you order your shirt, ladies. And if, even if you're not coming, it's an awesome shirt. And it just talks about how our lamp has to burn late into the night. And that's exactly what is happening with us. And that is how the Lord is allowing us to be used to advance his kingdom and to fund kingdom projects. Because we put a lot of hours into this. A lot of sacrifices have been made. And that's why we're doing Empire. Uh, because I want to help you. And I want to share some of the mistakes I've made, but I also want to give you the tools that you need to to start a successful business or ministry and to just encourage you. And, you know, some people are coming. They don't even know why they're coming. Well, you might not know why you're coming, but God does. And perhaps it's for another season, but you already have the tool that you need. And so we're going to grow this every year. And we're already planning where we're going to have it next year because it doesn't like we're going to have enough room in the hotel that it's going to be in this year. So we'll go through with it this year. We're going to, it's going to be awesome. But my word to you, I know Lisa Bird, you're going to be there. Thank you for registering. But it's like my word to you today is, this is a word on top of a word. Don't limit God. Everything that we have done, even the bracelets, like the tumblers, the umbrellas, the tees, like we projected one thing. And the Lord far exceeded that. And then we scramble <laughs> the socks, the blankets. <sighs> because when God breathes on a thing, y'all, he breathes on it. Amen. I shall prosper where I am planted. Amen. Thank you all for ordering your register. Thank you for registering. Thank you for ordering the teas. A lot of you are saying I registered, I registered. So thank you. Um, I love you. Brittany has it pinned. Make sure you order your shirt. Don't forget your miracle tumblers. Don't forget the Jehovah Rapha bling tea. Uh, April showers, May flowers. Don't forget your miracle umbrellas. And we're going to get right into the word now. Brittany, you got it up for me? And I also have an amazing testimony to share. And that also made me reopen the empire. Like the Lord was just, you moved his calculator for me, four, four, four. Um, it really made me just say, I surrender. Whatever your will is, Lord. That's why it says, don't limit God. And I'm telling y'all do the same thing. So y'all ready for the word this morning? I am. I'm ready for the word. Um, I'm ready for the word. And one thing I want to say is that the prayer emails that are coming in, thank you for submitting your prayer request. And you can do so through kellylane.org, which is my website. You just take one E out. That's the difference from social media and then my actual website, K-E-L-L-I-E-L-A-N-E.org. Uh, there you can submit your prayer request. And I'm telling you, it's keeping us very busy. But one of the things that I'm seeing so much is that a lot of you all are praying for direction. A lot of you all are praying for purpose and I'm seeing it all ages. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female. We're getting these requests in for prayer and you're, you're saying different things. But one thing that I keep seeing a lot um, is that you don't know your purpose or you're asking for direction about a decision you have to make. You need clarity. And so one thing I just want to say, uh, in addition to what we're going to learn today, is that if you're really at a crossroad and you honestly don't know what to do, this is when you press into the presence of the Lord. This is when you get before him and this is when you fast. If you are able to fast, this is when you go on a fast and say, Lord, I need you to show me which way to go. And I'm telling you, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 3 and 5 that we trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not on our own understanding. But in all of our ways, acknowledge him. He will direct our path. So I don't want you to walk around always saying I'm lost. I don't know my purpose. I have people that write me and say, I feel like I'm dead. It, it just reminds me how over and over Jacob kept talking about death in this in this passage. Like every time you looked up, Jacob was like, I'm just going to die now. I'm going to die now. I'm going to die now. And we'll talk about it more in a minute. But I, people tell me, you know, I feel like I'm dead. I feel like I'm just walking around. I don't have a purpose. But I'm just here to tell you, you do have a purpose, a God-given purpose. God has a hope and a future for you. And I want you to grasp it this morning. I don't want you to speak it over your life another day that you don't have a purpose or that you're lost or that you feel dead. The devil is a liar. So I want to say that openly because I want to shut up the mouth and the lies of the enemy this morning, okay? That you do have a purpose and plan and God has it for you and you're going to walk it out. We're going to declare it over your life today that you would know who you are and where you're going in this season. We're not lost. No, we're prayer warriors. We pray until we get direction. Let's go into the word this morning. Genesis 46, 28 to 34. And we thank you for your word, Lord. As they near their destination. So now Jacob and his family have left Canaan. 
Uh, he's already offered up sacrifices to Bathsheba. And now they're moving on towards Egypt, which is a place where Israelites were not welcomed. Right? Like they're going to a land filled with their enemies. And this just shows you that God really will allow you to live peaceably among your enemies. He will. He'll cause your enemies to bless you. He'll cause your enemies to be at peace with you. Here we go. 28. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Right, Brittany? As they near their destination, Jacob sent Judah ahead to meet Joseph and get directions to the region of Goshen, Goshen, to the region of Goshen. And when they finally arrived there, Joseph prepared his chariot and traveled to Goshen to meet his father, Jacob. When Joseph arrived, he embraced his father and wept, holding him for a long time. Finally, Jacob said to Joseph, now I am ready to die. Y'all hear Jacob again? Goodness, Jacob. Now I am ready to die. Since I have seen your face again and know you are still alive. And Joseph said to his brother and to his entire family, I will go to Pharaoh and tell him my brothers and my father and my father's entire family have come to me from the land of Canaan. These men are shepherds and they raise livestock. They have brought with them their flocks and herds and everything they own. And then he said, when Pharaoh calls for you and asks you about your occupation, you must tell him we your servants have raised livestock all our lives, as our ancestors have always done. When you tell him this, he will let you live here in the region of Goshen, for the Egyptians despise shepherds. Last line again, uh, 33 and 34. Then he said, when Pharaoh calls for you and asks you about your occupation, you must tell him, we, your servants, have raised livestock all our lives, as our ancestors have always done. And when you tell him this, he will let you live here in the region of Goshen for the Egyptians despise shepherds. But here's the thing. Goshen, as I told you all, was the area in Egypt that was the nearest to Canaan. But what I like about this, and this question was raised this morning when we were studying this, is like, they were like, why did Joseph tell him that when Pharaoh asked you, tell them that you've raised lives like all your lives? Well, they have. So in other words, it's like, Pharaoh, this is what we were created to do. This is our purpose. So although we are coming to a place that is now blessed and has plenty during a time of famine and scarcity, we're not going to change who God has called us to be. We're going to continue to walk out our call and we're going to continue to do what the Lord's blessed us to do. We've raised livestock all our lives. We've been shepherds all of our lives. And even though Egypt, Egyptians despise this, it's like we're not going to alter what you have called us to do. And this is why I named this Know Your Purpose, because you have a purpose. And regardless of where you go, no matter what surroundings you find yourself in, Demir, you keep calling them to put you out. You need some water. You can't control it. She's also sorry. You know, I always put Thad out in the mornings. <laughs> Thad, just show her the door and give, give her uh, some vitamin C and some water and she'll be okay. Sorry, y'all. Allergies are flaring. But anyway, and it's like, they knew who they were, y'all. And I like the fact that Joseph, and he did not try to tell his family to mask who they are in God. Like, he's like this is who you are. Uh, this is what you've always been. So when you talk to him, you tell him that. But it's something else I wanted to point out because Jacob's always talking about he wants to die. He's going to, he's going to die. He says now in 30, he says, finally, Jacob said to Joseph, now I'm ready to die since I have seen your face again. And I know you are still alive in this moment. Jacob is like, life can't get any better than this. Like I have been reunited with my son. Benjamin is a safe, alive. Well, he's been returned to me. I didn't lose Simeon. I have all my boys here. We are now in a place where there's plenty and I have my son back and life is so good that I'm just ready to die. But do you know Jacob lived another 17 years after that? Because it's like, you can say you're ready to die or you can say this or that, but the timing of God is in his hands and his hands alone. And so it just shows that you can say that all you want. I'm telling you, people have been emailing us saying, I feel like I'm dead. And it's like, when I'm reading these prayers, I'm like, no, you're, you're, you're very much alive. Like, no, we silence the lies of the enemy that's telling you that, no, you're not dead. You're alive. And not only are you alive, but you should walk out the purpose and plan that God has for you. This is exactly what is happening here. We admire Joseph so much. I wrote some things down here about Joseph. Joseph repaid good for evil. Remember, his brothers contrived on a way to get rid of him. And now you find him here contriving a way to make sure they are protected. It's like he took an event, something that happened to him that was so hurtful and so unfair, and yet he never had an attitude about it. 
You never find him really complaining about it. And then when he had an opportunity to save his family, he did. How was Joseph able to do that? How was he able to repay good for evil? How was he able to lead his family to a safe place where they could be who they are in God without holding resentment? It's because Joseph knew his purpose. He knew. Remember? When he revealed himself to his brothers, it is me, Joseph. Joseph, your brother, in case they got it twisted and thought it was another Joseph some kind of way in Egypt. He's like, you know, I'm not Zaphna, Panea. I'm Joseph, your brother, Joseph, the one whom you sold into slavery. But he goes, no, no, no. Don't get upset, though, because it had to go this way. The Lord allowed it to happen this way to send me ahead of you to make a way for you to pave the way for you to come over and be safe and to prosper in this land. Joseph knew his purpose. Regardless of how ugly it was or how painful it was, he saw the hand of God in the situation. Can we see the hand of God in our situations today? Or we continue to look back and in the rearview mirror and just be so upset and hurt. Yes, there are things that have hurt us. Yes, there have been things that made us cry. Yes, we've been rejected. We've been disappointed. But look at Joseph. Look at Jesus. You don't see them blaming anybody. They knew their purpose. Jesus knew why he was set here on the earth, why the word became flesh. He knows why he was here to save us, you know, to point us towards heaven. And so even though people did him wrong, the same ones who walked with him, the same ones who said they would never betray him, Jesus knew his assignment. And when you know your assignment, you know what you're supposed to be doing. It's a lot more difficult to be thrown off track because you know who you are and you know why you were created. Matthew Henry said, whatever employment or condition God in his providence has allotted for us, let us accommodate ourselves to it and satisfy ourselves with it. One more time. I love Matthew Henry. He dedicated his life to the study of the gospel, to breaking it down for us to come behind him so many years later and be able to read the works of his hands and be blessed and have a better understanding of the word. What has God called you to do? And if you honestly don't know, just be honest about it. Say, Lord, I don't know what you called me to do, but I really need to get about your business and I need to know. Show me, Lord. Just type it in. Show me, Father. What have you called me to do? Y'all, we don't want to leave this life with our work undone because we never figured out what it was that God would have us to do. Matthew Henry says, whatever employment or condition, if you don't know, type it in. Show me, Lord. Whatever employment or condition God in his providence has allotted for us. Let us accommodate ourselves to it and satisfy ourselves with it. You know, because the worst thing you can do is, is operate in some type of high level position that looks great, but it's not what God called you to do. It's better to be in a low place, as Matthew Henry says, a mean post than have the shame of being on a high one that God did not call you to. A lot of people are saying, show me, Lord. You get that, though? It's better to be what appears to be lowly in the eyes of someone else because the Egyptians felt like shepherds were low, like lower than low. Bless you, Don. The like lower than low, and yet this is what God had called them to do. And then not only that, they are secured in Goshen, a place that is offset, a place that seems like they would never become a blessed nation, yet God did it. It's like when God calls you to a thing, it's only a matter of time before there's a public revealing. So even though you may be in a season of obscurity right now and it seems like God's not turning things around for you or it seems like the Lord is not showing you or that what you're doing is in vain, there will be a time of public revealing. I always say that, you know, when it seems like God's not doing anything, you, you need to know that he's at work in you. And when the timing is right and everything comes together like it needs to and when our characters have been developed and matured to handle what he's called us to do then he will, he will reveal us. He's not going to keep us a secret because he says in his word that I am looking, my eyes are just looking to and fro in the earth. I am looking for someone to, to make myself strong in, to show my strength through, to show how mighty I am through. So it's not like God does not want to use people who want to be used. I mean, I pray this over and over and I still pray it. Use me, Lord, for your glory. I want to be an instrument. I want to be just a vessel fit for the master's use. Don't you? But with it, it's like, watch your mouth. Even Jacob, I'm just going to die now. No, you're not, Jacob. You have 17 more years to see the goodness of the Lord. He lived past the famine. Had he died in the famine, he wouldn't be able to see the promise of the Lord revealed. But he had to press through the difficult time to see the promise. And a lot of times, we give up in the fight. We give up because the fire, the flames are too hot. But if we just endure our process... The Lord is going to bring us out unscathed. It's going to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they emerged from their fiery furnace and not even a hair on their head had been singed because it's just a part of the refinement. 
This is part of the process. We will not rush our processes, but we have to know that in the end, the purpose will be revealed and not just for us, but for his people that, that he will lift you up to a place. Y'all God can lift you to a place where you have to say hands down. It is God that is with him. It is God that is with her. Same thing happened here. Joseph knew when to speak. He knew when to be quiet. Not only that, when he spoke, he actually had the right words to say. Joseph was like so totally awesome, totally led by God. And the fruit showed. God showed him things to come. The Lord gave him strategies. The Lord touched his heart to where he would not be angry with his family, what they had done to him. And then he repaid good for evil. So let's endure our processes, y'all. Like Brittany just said, I won't give up in the fight. Type it in. I won't give up in the fight. Y'all, it's hard. I tell you all every day. I told y'all some, some of y'all on here last night and people say, you look tired, Kelly. Well, this is not an easy job that I have here. My whole team is tired. But the Bible says that we will reap a reward in due season. We faint not. That you are never to grow weary in your well-doing. So on the days when I do feel tired, Lord, I thank you for renewing my strength. I thank you, Father, that you will give me the grace to go through this and to be who you've called me to be. We cannot give up in the fight, y'all. We have to keep pressing. Jacob tried to give up and couldn't. 17, imagine that. I've seen my son. Life can't get any better than this. I'm 130 years old. And then the Lord says, no, it's not over yet. And I said it to you today, it's not over yet, warrior nation. So let's stop talking like it is. Because it's not a man, friend, be 40. The fight is fixed and we win with Jesus. Do not give up in the fight. Are y'all with me this morning? I have a miracle testimony that I want to share. And then we're going to go into prayer. Let me just say this also. Judah was sent ahead. If, if you go back through it, Judah was sent ahead to get with Joseph and to get direction for where they were to go next, which was to Goshen. The Lord always sends a trailblazer ahead. Like John the Baptist was sent as a forerunner to Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know, this all, Judah was a forerunner for his family, you know, to make sure that things went the way they needed to go. They didn't blow this deal when they got to Egypt because they knew that this land they were entering was not a land where they were welcome. So there was a strategy put in place. And Jacob sent Judah ahead to get with Joseph. Joseph then gives them a strategy of how to deal with Pharaoh. We have to be wise. We have to proceed with caution. And we have to wait for God-given strategies because if we do this in our own ability and in our own thinking, we'll blow it. We have to know when to speak and when to be quiet. And I said it to say the same thing with empire, ladies. It's like, I have gone before you. And this has been so hard. I don't want you to think for a moment that this has been easy. So you're going to find me saying it more and more. This has been the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. Just in case for a moment that y'all think this is easy. Because it looks easy. It looks like we can just turn on the phone and just say good morning and smile and tell you the weather and pray. And then that's it. We spend hours and hours that you do not see preparing for this. Praying over you. All the hell we've gone through. All the meals that we have missed. All the sacrifice that we have made that we go through to deliver the gospel. It is not easy. And if it's not easy for me, I don't want you to think that what God's called you to do is going to be easy because guess what? You have an enemy that does not want you to tap the thing that God has called you to do. So he works overtime, especially as you get close to it, to steer you off course. But just as Judah went ahead as a forerunner for his family, the Lord has allowed me to go ahead of you. And that is why we have to turn around and say, now, I know this is the way to go. Let me give you some tips on how to get there. That is why we're doing Empire. That is why we're coming together in person. That is why we're praying together. That is why we're doing I Am Woman. That is why we're doing the Night of Miracles. Because the Lord has sent me ahead. And it's going to save some of you time, energy, effort, and money as we tell you some of the mistakes that we've made. And we give you the necessary tools that you need to be successful. There's always a forerunner. There's always a deliverer out of every family. So that is why we reopen Empire. Because the Lord told me there's some more people that he wants to reach. And so I have to be obedient and just bow my will to his and say, God, however you would have me to do this is the way I have to do it. So a lot of times you will find me saying, well, I was going to do it this way, but God said do it this way. Because I have to make sure that I'm yielded to the Holy Spirit and I do things the way God would have me to do them. Because the last thing you want to do is do it in your own strength, to do your own thing. Because your own thing is not going to be blessed. But when you do a God thing, you will see his blessings upon it. You will. So I want to share this miracle testimony with you. And then we're going to go into prayer. Thank you, Britt. This is from your warrior sister, Tana. She says, I started watching your Facebook lives in November of 2017. And immediately, God changed 
my real estate. Let me say that again. I started watching your Facebook lives November of 2017. Immediately, God changed my real estate business model. I have been selling real estate for over 20 years, and I consider myself an established and a successful agent. I only sold properties. I never did rentals. There are 12,000 homeless families in Washington, D.C., and it's hard to compete for a rental when other people can afford the expensive rents. I was approached by a D.C. housing agency to help with the housing voucher program. And at first, I resisted. I want you to listen to this. At first, I resisted. Then, I lost three contracts in one week. And God spoke. Somebody's got to help my people with housing. So, I followed the directions. And now, I have so many clients that I need to hire a team. I am so busy, I can barely sleep. If I can get myself organized... I can make a significant amount of money, much more than what I'm making right now. If I hire more agents, five times to ten times more. Because I have city agencies, federal agencies, community organizations, and nonprofits calling me to help their clients every day. When you open the registration for Empire, I thought to myself, I don't need that. But now I see that I need help organizing my team. I also need to hire an assistant. And God spoke to me again and said, offer the position to a warrior. So I am opening up the job to someone who wants to work from home and make extra money. Please share my email address, which is tanyasbrown at gmail.com. Thanks, Kelly, for your prayers and the cute bling t-shirts. I wear the shirts to minister to my clients. Brittany, will you type that email in? Instagram, we'll give you an email afterwards. Let me just say this. See, she was just selling homes. And the Lord had another plan for her. She started following the ministry and immediately her business model changed. She saw that we opened Empire the first time and she felt like she didn't need it. And then the Lord brought it back to her and said, no, you do need it because you need help learning how to structure and develop your team. These are things that we have suffered through. Now she has so many clients and her workload is so heavy. You see how God changed that? Just Look, November of 17 was not that long ago. God has increased her. She is walking in a wealthy place. And now it's like the widow woman in the jars of oil. Remember, we talked about this. The oil didn't run out until she ran out of jars. Same here. It's like as long as she keeps collecting jars, the Lord will continue to, to pour them to overflowing. Had the widow woman collected more jars of oil, she would have been able to not only take care of her own family and pay off her own debt and make sure her son stayed out of slavery. She would have been able to um, bless her family and her community because she continued to collect oil. And so that's the same thing here. That as long as you collect the jars, God will continue to fill them to overflowing. So it's an awesome testimony. It's for real. And it's exactly what happened on Saturday at our 15th and we made event. People literally stood up from the audience and began to give testimonies just like that. Countless people gave testimonies just like that of how since they've been following this ministry and they start giving to this ministry and being a part of this ministry in whatever capacity, whether you're buying shirts or giving donations or doing both, and the Lord is blessing them. I know this is good ground. I know that we are walking in wealthy places. We got countless like one lady got stood up and said, more has happened to me this year since I've been following you than what has happened to me over the last 14 years. God gets the glory for that. God gets the credit for that. And so if you're interested, uh, Brittany posted that email and you can get in touch with your warrior uh, and she can help you and tell you what other details there are. But I just wanted to show you all that what God is doing, he really is enlarging our territories. This is for real. The Lord said, it is for real now. Like, I am expanding you. Like, this is not a dream anymore. This is really happening. Everybody who's in connection with the warrior nation, with this ministry, shall be blessed. So let's get ready to go into prayer. Know your purpose. Know who you are. Amen, Joy. She said, my oil is overflowing. Type it in. My oil is overflowing. My oil. I love y'all so much. Y'all help me with this in the mornings. My oil is overflowing. Declare it of your, of your life today. Just open your mouth and say it. My oil is overflowing. And again, I will prosper where I am planted. It's very important that we give life to these words because the power of life and death rests in our own tongues. And that's why you can't be walking around saying I'm lost. 
Somebody said, I had to go get my ticket. I'm back. Praise the Lord. I don't have a lot of slots left. That's why you can't walk around and say, I feel like I'm dead. I'm hopeless. I don't know where to go. No, no. Those are lies from the enemy. I don't care what you really feel like. You open your mouth and you say, I'm victorious. I know who I am in God. I have a purpose. The Lord has a hope and a future for me. And I'm going to walk that thing out. I'm going to hear him say, well done. That you've done everything that I placed you in the earth realm to do. Speak those things over your life. My oil is overflowing. I am entering into a land that flows with milk and honey. I will prosper right where I am. The enemy will not win in my life. Declare these things over your life. My oil is overflowing. He is the God of more than enough. He will bless my mind. He will bless my home. He will bless my business. He will bless my ministry. He will fill my cup to overflowing to where I can be a blessing to my community to where he can have given me so many resources that I need a team to get this thing done. That's what's happened to us. Every time I bring somebody else in, we need somebody else. It is endless. And God is just saying that what I really have for you is beyond anything you can ask or imagine. It is beyond that. Beyond. Jacob asked to die. The Lord gave him 17 more years. That's the kind of God that we serve. He does exceedingly and abundantly more than we can even pray for, y'all. But our prayer is a start. It's a step of faith to say, God, I believe you for this in my life. And it's not just so we can be comfortable, y'all. But remember, we exist to bring prayer back to the nation, the nation back to its knees. And we exist to fund kingdom projects. We can't fund kingdom projects if we have no funds. So we have to enter into that land that flows with milk and honey so that we can be prosperous and bless other people. Because what good is it to have something and not even be enough for you? How can you ever bless anybody else? That's why we have to do it. So we're going to get ready to go into prayer. Brittany, uh, make sure you have the links posted for how they can help us. We're about to buy a building, Warrior Nation, our building, the headquarters of Warrior Nation Ministries. And I already see, you know, this is just the first step of many. We're going to have probably multiple campuses. It's so huge. We're answering your prayers. We didn't wait to get into the building like I wanted to do to have it perfect. But God is showing me that the conditions will never be perfect. But that you start with what you have. And then God will increase you from there. And so we started with what we have. We banded together. We solicited help. And we're just making it our business to pray for you. And we're going to let God do the rest. Same for you. Where can you start? Where can you start? Do not wait for the conditions to be perfect because they never will be. You have to make something out of what you have right now. Like a warrior said, you will prosper where you are planted. So as we're going to prayer this morning, and I just speak a prayer over you, a blessing over you. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for being faithful to this ministry. You see how much work we put into this, but you can't even begin to see the half of it. Praying for you, laboring over you, making mention of you in our prayers according to Ephesians 1 and 16. That now we're going to start going through our giving apps and the, where you all donate. And we're going to start calling you out by name even over there. So we're going to have people praying for you through the emails. We, have, we already have a team, an internet team praying for you on the videos. We have a team praying for you through the emails. And now we're going to have a team praying over your names as you mail in donations, as you submit through PayPal and Givelify or through the donate link on my page or whatever on my website. All of it takes you to the same place. We have your names. Include your phone numbers. We're doing random phone calls. We're going to call you out by name because it is very important that we make mention of you in our prayer. So we're working overtime to make sure that we are serving you. Amen. Humble beginnings. Never, ever, ever despise the day of a small beginning. Be faithful. There were so many times we went places and there were like five or ten people in the audience and we just kept on going with it. We kept praying. We kept believing. And even once the Lord changed it, I was still nervous. Is anybody going to show up? You know, for so long, nobody showed up. And the enemy was like, nobody's going to show up. But the Lord told me the days of nobody showing up is far behind me. That everywhere we go is going to be packed out because the Lord has raised me up for a time such as this. And he has called you all to link up with us and partner with us because we have a great work to do. And that is to bring prayer back to the nations, the nations back to his knees. Amen. Blessed by association. You are blessed by association. And it's no goodness of my own. It's the favor of God resting upon this ministry. Father, we thank you so much this morning. Father, we know who we are in you. And if we don't, Lord, we speak it over our lives and we declare it by faith that we know who we are in you. Lord, all of us, male and female, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We're in awe of how you have created us and how you knit us together in our mother's womb. How even before we were born, you already knew us and set us apart. How you have a hope and a future for every single one of us, God. And we thank you that even now we can shut up the lies of the enemy, Lord. And we thank you that we will know who we are in you. And in this season, Lord, we will no longer be hopeless and lost and filled with despair. But we will hold our heads up high. We will stick our chest out, God. We will listen for your instructions and we will walk them out. And God, we thank you for all the grace that we need. 
need, all the mercy that we need, all the provision that we need, and the wisdom that we need to go forth and do what you have purpose for us to do. God, we thank you for this study in Genesis, Lord, and how you are showing us how Joseph, he knew who he was in you. He knew when to speak, when to be quiet. He knew what to say. God, help us to know when to speak, when to be quiet. Give us the wisdom to articulate the right words that is our prayer this morning. Father, go before the warrior nation and make every rugged path smooth, every crooked place straight and bring every high place low. Father, I thank you that no weapon formed against them shall prosper and every tongue that is risen up against them shall be condemned. Father, you are so faithful. You are truly allowing the prayer of Jabez to manifest in the lives of the warrior nation. I've been speaking this over the warriors for months and months now. And Lord, you're making it good. You're enlarging their territories, Father. You're granting them favor. Ask you now to even open doors for them that no man can shut. To place your hands upon them, Lord, and give them the strength that they need to go forth in your name and do what you've called them to do. Lord, for everyone who helps us today. Everyone who gives a sacrificial offering or a tithe, Lord, thank you that 51% of the warrior nation now tied to this ministry. Father, and we thank you for that, God. Lord, we just honor you for what you are doing. Lord, thank you for every gift giver. Lord, you said you will always give seed to the sword. Bless every seed, sword, Lord. You said that the generous will prosper, God. So we thank you that even now as we give to this ministry. And Lord, they help us buy this building and become operational and to hire our prayer team, Lord. Just bless them. Let their cups fill to overflowing. We thank you for it right now, Lord. Thank you for everyone who will also so go over today to the raffle network and enter for a chance to, to win this miracle car Lord, you told us to do it and so we thank you for who will win this 2018 chevrolet malibu god you have that person handpicked and we thank you for this morning and lord with the rest of us we will rejoice in that individual who will exercise kingdom ownership god because that's how faithful you are you remember your people and you have a reward for someone out there god and the rest of us as family members we rejoice over our family member who wins this car god we thank you for it today Lord, we step out into this dark and pillars where we were your full armor, the better truth around our ways, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. We were standards of peace. Lord, we care to shield of faith and the sword of people with your word. God, let your word be hidden in our hearts that we will not sin against you. We your nation, whatever your petitions are, whether it's for healing, whether it's for your ministry, for your business, for your mind, for your marriage. If you don't know your calling, just say, Lord, I need your help. Just show me whatever it is. God, we lift up every petition to you right now, Father. You see. Lord, you answer, Lord, in a way that brings the most glory and honor to your name. Father, we stand in agreement with our brothers and sisters today. We pray the prayer of agreement, Lord, that you will do even more than they can even type in right now. Even their unspoken request, God, that you will do even more than that. Lord, that you will give them reasons to just celebrate as you did for Jacob. That it wasn't over for Jacob, Lord. You blessed and extended his life. Lord, just wow the warriors, Lord. Let them see things they never thought they would see. Blow their minds with your goodness, Father. We thank you for it today. Lord, we honor you for our time together. We declare today is a day filled with victories, filled with breakthroughs, filled with the miraculous, Father. We expect miracles, and therefore, we shall receive them. You're a good and perfect Father, Lord, and we honor you. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. All right, Warrior Nation. May the Lord breathe on you today. Uh, make sure that you help us by giving a donation today, Lord y'all uh, for our building we're also raising money to be able to send the fifteen thousand dollars to the charity that feeds the homeless every month we want to provide at least forty five thousand meals so we're asking everyone we're asking everyone to give the 72 dollars for the building if you could do more we would appreciate it we ask everyone to give you know if you can give like a seat of fifty dollars towards the homeless that'll help us to start having that available to go ahead and send out the first of the month instead of kind of waiting we want to get that out as soon as possible also we'll be closing on our building very soon so we're going to need the funds for that and don't forget the miracle car. The keys are around here somewhere. After you give your donations today and your tithes and your offering, please go over to the Raffle Network. You can get there from my website, kellylane.org, and submit. It's a $25 ticket donation. We ask you to give more. We ask you to buy multiple tickets. Thank you. Some of y'all bought multiple, multiple tickets. Thank you. But y'all, help us. This is a fundraiser. Right now, we've raised $40,000. We have quite a ways to go, but you know what? I'm going to keep speaking it, that we will exceed our goal of $250,000. We will exceed that in Jesus' name. Ask y'all to help us with that. It's going to be amazing today we can give these keys to some faithful warriors. So help us with that. Also, register for Empire. And please order your teas. We want to go ahead and get those shipped out to you. We're running out of time. That's April the 14th. Also, the Night of Miracles, Warrior Nation, is June 1st here in Flowood, Mississippi. It's going to be awesome. Please go ahead and reserve your rooms. It's going to be awesome, and we're excited about it, so be ready. Uh, miracles Can Happen Now is our theme, and we're going to enter into that place with great expectations. Y'all, for those who were there on Saturday, the presence of the Lord was, it was so thick in that place that I cannot even imagine what's going to happen with the Night of Miracles. I cannot even imagine, but I know it's going to be glorious and miracles are going to happen right then and there. And we believe it, that God is doing a great work in the warrior nation. 
So I love you all. I thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for your support. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for giving. We love you so much. And we'll check in with you later, okay? I love y'all so much. All right. Bye-bye. We get everything, y'all? Mm-hmm. All right. See you later. Praise God. <laughs> Expect miracles. Amen, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs>